historical. I love the castles along the coast. It's a must. The north coast of Wales probably contains more major castles per square mile than anywhere else in Britain. A tribute to the resistance put up by the men of Gwynedd against the English in the Middle Ages. And the centrepiece of this ring of English castles was... Caernarvon, which is a very, very, very exceptional town because in it is one of the best preserved medieval castles in Europe, no doubt about it. And you can see that for miles and miles away. In the medieval times, if you saw that huge castle, which in those days was painted white, it would glisten over the whole countryside, fill you with fear. Tom Morris empathising there with the feelings of his ancestors towards Carnarvon. One of the latter-day custodians of the castle is Paul Williams. Carnarvon Castle itself is over 700 years old, built on the order of Edward I, King of England, after the subjection of the Welsh in 1282, and it took over 50 years to complete. The workforce itself was entirely English, over 2,500 workmen. It was one of a chain of castles, including Flint, Rhydlan, Conwy and Harlech, but especially it was chosen as the seat of a new line of English princes, with the first English Prince of Wales being born here in 1285 to Edward I and Queen Eleanor. The Investiture Museum here at Carnarvon charts the history of the Princes of Wales, up to our recent Prince Charles, Invested, of course, in 1969. This is just one of the exhibitions on offer at the castle, which, although it was once overrun by the Welsh, is still in a magnificent state of repair. But there's more to Carnarvon than its castle. There's the Roman fort of Sagontium, with its museum, and the streets of the town itself. Carnarvon is a very, very pleasant place to be. Lots of cafes and restaurants, very, very interesting buildings because of the nature of the town. You've got the Roman remains there, medieval remains, Georgian houses, Victorian houses, all mixed up in one place. 